Right folks, I'm here, rod and net in hand, camera and tripod at the ready. I'm here at Avington Trout Fisher in Hampshire. I'm going to be trying out a fairly new project they got, which is a catch and release fishery in, I think they call it number three lake. So you've got, look, looking back here, lovely big long lake here with big fish in it. Middle lake I'm going to be walking down to, and uh, that's a big fish lake. Well, that's where they keep the big fish and they've made the third lake at the bottom catch and release so I think there's only two guys on the fishery today this is uh, quiet winter I'm going to go down and uh, see if we can't find something out about it as you can see it's a lovely looking spot this is going to be nice in the spring and summer the water's now starting to go clear oh is that a fish there? No, that's weed. And of course in the winter it's very difficult trying to spot fish because the sun's going around low. Here is what they call the carrier stream. Can't help, all anglers look off bridges, don't they? But look at that, they've opened this up superbly. Aaron, the fishery managers, they've done loads of work here. This was like a few years ago, it was a jungle. They've opened that right up for casting, which is really good. And uh, they do grayling, winter grayling fishing, I think, in there. So that's worth knowing. It comes under the river, I guess, a pipe. I don't know, or from the river. Pipe goes in there. Big feed um, pipe going into there. And we've had quite a lot of rain this winter. So I'm going to walk right down the other lake, not disturb this gentleman fishing over the back there, and uh, just take a look and see if we can't catch something. So you can see the middle lake up here and here on this side it's a very deep area this sort of over to that tree across deep pool is sort of the unknown here now I can see a light patch here I'm not sure it's a fish or not but I guess just have a, a throw and a cast so there should be a good stock of fish in here let's get the camera down get myself set up Let's get this all done. Now, my downside is I haven't got a peak cap, so I'm not going to be spotting too many fish, although it is looking absolutely tap water clear. I can see a couple of carp over there. Got my folding net, my ancient folding net, regular 9 for 6 fly rod, old reel floating line. The fly here, so you can see, is I'm going to start with this. I've got a feeling I might have to go smaller. That's the uh, famous Sid Knight Pearly Daddy, and that's been really successful on my last two trout clips. Whether it will be on this, I don't know. Uh, six pound leader, which is not tapered, is just straight through. Uh, probably lost a few feet off, it's about eight feet. I'm going to give that a try, and I'm going to try fast retrieve tweaks because smaller fish will chase. They would generally, you know, chase after something. The other thing is, if you're fishing, I've only found this with catch and release fishing, that's all I can say. When you're fishing really slow, because they've been caught and released, they'd be a little bit nippy at the fly. So you get bump, gone, bump, gone. Now, if you're fishing really slow, they can actually pull the line through your fingers and you can't lift into them. If you're tweaking it in quite quickly, you're more likely to come into contact with that trout and hook it. So listen, I've got to take the barb off of this and that I do by, it's barbless, like catch and release is barbless. I've got a pair of scissors here, okay. So they've got cutters there, but these are quite handy. Hopefully you can see them there against my jacket. They've got flat pinching bits there, so you can get hold of the barb on a hook. If you just push on the barb and then just rock it gently backwards and forwards, you'll feel a little click normally, and that's where that just takes that barb off. So then you're fishing, as per the rules, barbless. The only trouble is my fingers are cold. Let's crack on. Gonna be using the hedge cam. The hedge cam? The hedge cam? What the hell is a hedge cam? Sound like a tree surgeon.
hooked up boys. Not a big fish because it's catch and release. And I'm gonna play this one on the line. I'm not gonna take, bother taking it on the reel. Uh, I think they got Sparktics and Tigers, I think, in here. Different species. This one, probably a rainbow. He's going well, look at this. It is cold water fishing for you. I do like catching them in the cold water. I don't particularly like the cold, but I do like the cold water. Now, I'm gonna try and get this one in quite quickly. Oh, well, perhaps not then, perhaps not, okay. I get the impression. Is that a brownie? I'm gonna keep him in the water. Just get him straight unhooked like that. That's how easy the flies out. A quick look at this. Lovely brownie, look at that fish. And this is what I like best about this. Fabulous looking fish. And look at this, back it goes. Straight away, no problems, cold water. Wow, I do like to get an early fish, boys. Look at this, can't get out quick enough now. Nice bit of peace and quiet. You cannot beat it, and of course, the benefit of catch and release fishing is you don't have that constant pressure of having to have a limit, you know. You can just fish on and enjoy the day. It doesn't matter whether you catch one or three or five, it's catch and release, so that's a very, very good way of doing it. I think in the future, for average sized fish, this is going to be the way to go. Now, I've got a brown. How many different species will I get today? A rainbow? Would be nice, wouldn't it? And then I've got to work my way right down the other end, way down that bottom end of the lake down there, have a car here as well. Just got to be prepared for a take at any time, right up to lifting the line out. So I'm not fishing too slow, I'm trying to keep the fly coming all the time, so I'm constantly in touch with anything that might grab it at the other end. And I'm looking behind, I can see the fly just through the water there, just lift it up in an arc in case there's a fish following it. No, pick off and away we go again. Let's try over by that tree. Quite fancy that area over there. There's something about this pearly daddy fly, I think, when it's got all the fibres and legs on it, they twitch underwater, and I'm pretty sure that's what makes it so successful. The trouble, I'm so used to seeing fish, it's hard for me to stop and actually do what I call proper trout fishing like this. I'm normally just walking and looking and looking and looking, but it's so dark. The water depth is clear, but it's dark. At long last, the tracks are stopped, we got peace and quiet. Oh, I'm on. I had peace and quiet until I got hook up. And what's this one? I haven't moved yet, and that was quite a, an aggressive take. Oh yeah, come on, come on. See, it's easier to strip in with a smaller fish. Bigger one I wouldn't be doing this because I might have to move around the lake and I've got all this on the floor there. I'll be dragging it through the bushes and get caught up and lose a fish. But with a smaller trout, you can afford to play them using the line and not the reel. He's going well. What is this one? I've got a feeling it's another brownie, people. There we go. I've always liked catch and release fishing. I have no problem with it at all. There is, after all, only so many trout that you can eat. And look, what sport you're getting. It might be different in the summer. It's a brownie again, wow. There we go. It might be different in the summer. Let me just show you quickly. There's a fish with a pearly daddy, look, right in its jaws. 
my hands are wet. Keep them in the water. Hook, watch. Falls out, there's a hook. And there goes the fish. Bye. Brilliant. Two fish in about 20 casts. I'm getting a couple of bumps over in front of that tree. Now, Aaron, the fishery manager was saying, sometimes, let's get as far as I can up there, about there. Sometimes the fish will go, let's go schooling, you know, four or five, sixes or whatever, cruising around. And I'm just wondering if that's what there is up there. And I'm just out of range. We're on cast at the moment. I'm just out of range. Maybe I should go up there and go across. Might even see the fish. I don't know. But as it's been said, I've had one take on the fly dropping. The first pull I've had, I've actually had a, a tug the other way, missed it. So I'll try a couple of faster retrieves, just in case they want to chase. But I've got a feeling they might not want to move off a station. They might just be working that area up there. I'll have one more cast here, and then I'm going to have to move, I think, people. All right, grab the camera. Got the handkerchief over the camera because there was a little bit of drizzle, I'm going to call it. Have a walk around, try this angle, just... I could reach it maybe from the left-hand side, but I figure it's a, little, it's a little bit more open here. Yeah, it's very, very glary. Look at the glare I've got there, people. What is that down there? Is that trout or carp? I don't know you guys won't see them. Uh, there's a couple of carp laying down there. No shortage of carp in this particular lake. Hmm, that's a gap I've got to cast from up there, I think. Occasionally, you will see a trout. I want to come from here. There's a gap in the back and send the fly back the other way. That's my, uh, that's my hunch, people. Get it going the opposite direction. Who knows? I do not need to get these flies lost up the tree. Shame that's there, I can cast better than that. Just if I'm gonna throw it, always watch your back cast and you can you can throw it into a sort of gap in the trees there. I'm just wondering if those fish are laying up in that area there. Sometimes the fish will shoal pretty well where there are no other anglers. I see another carp down there in front of me, two carp in fact. So anything like this tree would attract them. And if anglers can't cast on that side over there, here, the fish will hold up there. Logical to get away from the anglers. Pretty sure that's a carp laying down there. I was just gonna blip at it just in case. Yeah, he's just drifted off. Of course you can catch carp on a fly. Normally in the spring. Oh god. That's a fly going. Or even a lead. That was lucky. That was lucky boy. Okay, maybe I won't be fishing this spot very long. I'm on. Over by that bush over there. Again, I'm wondering if it's a brownie. It's just that different angle. I did try from the from the following side. Oh, he's going in, he's going, he's going in the trees. Don't go in the trees. Don't go in the trees. Why well, he's going well this one. This one is going well. Holy smoly. Look at the ground he's covered from there to there. He really is scrapping this one. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this one. The way he's fighting. It could be, could be a rainbow, but I figure it's another brown. There he is on the surface. Obviously, look, barbless hooks, boys. You're going to lose some fish now and then, aren't you? You are going to lose fish. Can't be helped. Cannot be helped. That's why it's called barbless. It is indeed a brownie. Now I don't know whether you've got the last one on camera, the camera pinged off on me, but this is 
number three. Try and net him just down here. Actually, it looks different markings on that one. Let's have a look at this. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. No, 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 stop all that nasty jumping, splashing business. I think I've got him, I think I've got him. Oh, oh, get in. No, I haven't got him. I have got him. Oh, that's, oh no, it's a, it's a tiger. Oh, <laughs> what? What a result. Let me see if I can get this one out. Just quickly for you people. There's a pearly daddy just in the roof of the but it's out, it's in the net. Oh wow, look at this one. I got that down as a tiger trout. Fantastic boys, catch and release. There we go guys, fabulous. Fabulous looking fish, yeah. Just look at the markings on it. Gonna get him back really quickly. Now I asked Aaron if I could do this, just show you guys a picture. Very quickly, it's much better to unhook them quickly in the net. Let's get him back. Well, boys, a result there or what? I'm calling that a nice tiger trout, that one. It's gone away and that took right at that angle. So there are fish cruising around here. So that's three trout, two browns, one tiger. It might be a cheetah. It could be a leopard. I don't know what type of trout it is. Now I think it's a tiger trout though, and it might be a cheetah trout, I don't know, but I think it's a tiger trout. Right, let's get casting again. The thing is, with put and take fishing, you can afford to mix your speed of retrieve up. Oh, hang on, I've just got to cover that because I've just seen one just come out there. Just out of casting range. How does trout so clever? Just out of casting range. Yeah, mix the speed of retrieve up. And you can really bang it in fast, but I only do that for about three casts, I would say. If they don't take it, I will move or go back to very slow. When you get the fast retrieves, I find it can almost put too many fly line casts through that water. So you just want to try it just to mix it up. So if you've been fishing really, really slow, just don't be afraid to really do some long strips in fast. And very often you'll get a fish that absolutely slams it because it's something totally different. It's very easy. Let me get this out for a second. In the sense, hopefully, I'm trying to get that punch at the extra distance. So I've seen the trout move up there. It's very easy to get complacent when you're trout fishing, just figure of eight or just slow draws, you know, because you're relaxed and you haven't had a pull for a long time. You've got to be, what are we going to, I'm going to consider it aggressive. You've got, I'm a quite aggressive fisherman anyway on the fish. I'm trying to get aggressive, attack, 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 you know, to keep changing, keeps mixing it up because you just never know which speed of retrieve is going to get you the bumps and then when you do get the bumps, the takes, the bangs you know, just try and concentrate on that same speed of retrieve how many of us have been fishing casting away hour upon hour, nothing, bang, you get a take, miss it and you go what was I doing, how fast was I tweaking it, how fast was I twitching it because very often I want that extra six or eight feet, I can't get it treading on the fly line. How many of us do that? Treading on the fly line, so he's definitely not going to make it. I just can't get that angle. And again, if they're fish for quite a bit, they get pushed to an area that anglers can't get the fly line to. And it's only going to be a very long caster that's going to reach them. And that's the same, let's say, with carp fishing. A lot of fishing is like that. The fish will often only stand so much pressure for so long and then they're going to move off you know they're going to just go to an area that's a little bit more comfortable i mean this carp in here they've moved from there to there where my fly line's been going through them because they don't want to be bothered by it i'm going to try one slightly right my shoulder's going to give out shortly dear oh dear oh dear 
One branch, and I've got it. That's all it takes to ruin your day. Well, that cast, anyway. For some reason, mine seems to tie itself in a knot. It doesn't just get the hook caught in there. No, it's got to wrap itself round and tie itself in a knot. We'll try again. I'm going to catch the camera in a minute. I can see that coming a mile away. Look at that. I'm nearly there, not quite that. This is the first sort of peaceful bit I've had. I think the old quad bike's going to come down in a minute. That's going to shatter the silence. Uh, another little tip. Don't forget to renew the degreaser, in my case washing up liquid, on the leader. And that might just help that fly to sink a little bit faster. That's what it boils down to. Getting the fly down to the depth, finding the speed they want. Very often it's not actually, what I would say, the fly itself. It's the fact you're fishing that fly at the right pace. It's gone very quiet on me now. But listen, I've had three fish, I cannot grumble. And that tiger trout was a beauty. Fly by the tree. Two old holders, double holding. Well, the fishing's gone a little bit quiet on the catch and release lake, but of course here at Avington, you've got the beauty of the two main lakes with the fish in. Obviously, they're gonna be bigger in there as well, and that's what they call catch and keep, where you can pay the relevant price and catch, you know, and keep that number of fish. The catch and release, you just pay your ticket price, and then you just keep releasing, keep releasing. You cannot keep them. Here, you can, but of course, they will be bigger fish. Let's finish off and see if we can find something a bit tasty in here. Now because we've had so much rain, they've got a big sluice coming over there, like an inflow. And I've wondered why they weren't fishing it, but the light was funny the last time I came fished here. So I'm still on the pearly daddy, and I've walked along, I can just barely make out the bottom there. And I've seen some definite movements of fish going across there. Now whether they're just hanging in there, holding in there as we say, or whether they're actually you know, going around in a big circle here, I don't know. But I can't see them now, it's always a way, isn't it, you set the camera up and you can't see them. I just feel they would be laying with their heads in the current there. That's my take on it. So it's always worth a little look in here. I mean, when it's not rain and no current, possibly no fish there. Oh, this one. That's definitely a shape move through there then. I think there's another fish over there. Just down there, there's two fish. Oh, oh my word, there's a couple of real stonkers. Almost, almost, almost impossible to task, cast here. Oh yeah, there's a big fish, there's a big fish, guys. Yeah, you won't see them down there, but. They're not interested at all. No, I can't see them. I can't see them with the, that glare on the front of the water. Oh, have uh, any of you any had any of this? That's right, I have. 
I think I could take an oak tree down just to get one of Sid's pearly daddy flies back. <laughs> I think I've risked the tree preservation order. See what I mean? They don't just hook, they just tie knots. Right, let's try again. The old, the old pearly daddy's still going, it's been a bit chewed. When I crept around here, I was just walking past, there was a, a swirl just down in this corner, just down in there. So I figure there might be somebody at home. Um, I think it's worth a flick. Just toss the fly out and see if anything comes out. There's a quite a deep hole there. No, I don't see anything now. Now in the summer, you'd be able to see everything in here. Very, very clear. In the winter, look at it, grey, dark. Oh, no, another thing. I'm putting a lodge in a complaint. I've never seen so much mistletoe as I've seen this year. These trees are absolutely infested with it. And this is all over. I'm driving all over the place making these fishing films. And I've never seen so much mistletoe as I have this year. Why is that a sign off? Global warming, whatever. Somebody out there, please tell me why there is so much mistletoe in the trees. Another little tip to give you some uh, casting height, because I've got barbed wire fence and stuff here at the back cast. If you're of that disposition, these clumps, see these like, it's a sort of a pampas grass. It's normally rock solid. Now, if I balance up here and don't go in, I can not only look down through the water a lot better, Mind you, not that I can see much, it's very, very late in the afternoon now. But I've got height to get my fly out much farther. Oh my God, is that carp or trout? Just bear with me a second, guys. That's carp. So I might be able to get a bit more distance, if you can see, over that fence without hooking my camera and I've gone way over now, I've gone way over, because normally I would be standing back here and the back cast would be clipping that wire fence. And this stuff's quite forgiving for your line. So, camera adjusted. I'm going to have five, six casts here and then just move. There's a fish following me. There's a fish following me, guys, I think. I've just seen a sort of a bow wave or a ripple. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that line to spring tight. There's two carp there, I know that. See, I'm lifting the rod up and I'm looking for the fly and to see what's behind it. There's the fly and look about two feet behind the fly. Sometimes you can represent like that and blip it at the fish and actually catch that fish. Let's see if we can punch one out right out the middle of the lake where nobody else has probably put a fly line. Perfect. There's a trout moving over there. That's not a carp, that'd be a trout. We might need to do the same over there, but I don't have one of these clumps to stand on. Just be aware that, that you can fall into the water. Another little tip. Even when you get all these diving birds, they're not sort of really annoying. They're not like swans that tear all the bottom up and all the wee beds. And you might get these bits and pieces dotted around that's annoying and catch on your leader and stop the fly going down. But I have found, especially late in the day, that where they've all been active, stirring up the bottom, digging the weeds and stuff, the trout mover, they must get the insects, must be disturbed, I think, you know, from all the birds feeding, the diving birds especially. I'm not talking about um, great big swans. Let's get this thing out there if we can. Time is not on my side at the moment. But you can see all the weed here, probably been pulled up by swans and stuff. But there's now a little bit of airflow has drifted it in here. And the other birds have moved away, but I'm always going to have four or five casts where those birds have been. Look, probably nothing there, but I've done it enough times to know that very often a trout will be in there picking off insects and shrimps and stuff that the birds have just disturbed from pulling the weeds around. Another two casts here, just in case, and then I'm going to be moving up the left there. Two more bays before I call it quits. I am the last person on the fishery. Well, 
No surprise there then. Well, that's us done, I'm afraid. I've worked my way along there. The pearly daddy is in the pearly tree. One last cast it was. I thought I'd change direction, mid-cast. Never good, it's never good, it's never going to end well, is it? Anyway, it gives you an idea on catch and release fishing. Always worth giving it a go with a fly rod. It's up to you whether you want to keep the fish or whether you want to put them back. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button or you're going to miss knowing when the films go up. And I put them up all over the place, sometimes three days in a row over the weekends. Hit Mike's TA Outdoors, that's going really well as well because something else to watch. If there's nothing on TV, you've got two channels that you can bounce off both TA channels. We'll see you next time and hopefully we're going to hear some more of that. But not up there in the tree. See you guys.